Hello, hello out there in YouTube. I decided to surprise everybody with a bit of a spontaneous live session. And when I say live session, I mean a live recording. I'm not going to be, you know, doing the uh, carnival psychic answering questions thing. Um, maybe I'll do that sometime, but I don't plan on doing that necessarily right now. And I want to just kind of come on because I was really motivated <laughs> this to make a video about how you can get better readings when you are getting a psychic reading, when you're getting a tarot reading, or even when you're getting an astrology reading, if the astrologer is a psychic, right? Because not all astrologers are psychics. Some astrologers are just looking at the planets and kind of looking at more as uh, weather forecasters and not psychics at all. But in particular with this chat, I felt it was really important to start, you know, a conversation on this channel about how to get better readings, how to take better care of yourself, and how to make sure that you're actually getting a psychic reading and not just, you know, getting a random reading from some person who's probably just, you know, on a healing journey spiral and decided that they're going to read tarot for a couple of years. So... The reason I wanted to do this was because I've noticed over the course of the last month and a half or so that an interesting trend has started to kick up um, among certain uh, clients that I've had. And this is not meant to be um, an attack <laughs> against anyone that I have done a reading for this last couple of months. Um, a lot of you guys are new to me, and a lot of you guys are, you know, coming after being, you know, followers of maybe other readers, or, you know, you're kind of working me in to your entourage, and that's wonderful. But I've noticed that a lot of the questions that seem to be coming up all do no service to the querent who is asking the question. And... I think that a lot of that may be a consequence of just how things have been, right? This last nine, 10 years, tarot readings, astrology reports, oracle readings, runes, all of that have gotten very popular online, not just on YouTube, but also Facebook and Instagram, basically anywhere where you could put a video, you know, a reader has popped up. And there are some that are real readers and there are some that are real natural psychics with their abilities on and under control. And then there are some people that are not real and they might be calling themselves just coaches or intuitives, or they might just be calling themselves card slingers. Um, and they're still pretending they're giving psychic readings. And it's really important to know what you're dealing with and know what you're getting, but also some things that you can do to arm yourself better so that you can do a bit of a quality assurance check when you are in the middle of getting your reading. I posted on Facebook a few hours ago on my fan page on Facebook, um, you know, just a little bit of a vent that I had to get out there after doing a, a lot of video files this last week, not because I didn't want to do them. I'm hosting a sale uh, as we close up 2022, and it's great to be able to meet and read for so many people. But I'm going to say, you know, three to four out of five videos that I've had to record, and I'm recording, you know, you know, sometimes uh, half a dozen to, you know, 10 a night on top of my usual workload. They're just not asking questions. And that to me is a bit concerning. Because you have a situation where there is a misunderstanding of how this works. and Or maybe there's just not a whole lot of understanding of how different psychics operate, how different abilities actually work, some misinformation or distortion there. Or it also means that some people um, have maybe been getting taken advantage of from the readers or the people that they've been viewing before they came to me. And so this is where I want to kind of come and just set the record straight and help you guys, you know, see where you might be doing yourself a disservice. And so normally I do videos where I'm kind of teaching and instructing people who want to become tarot readers or want to become astrologers 
or want to study magic or want to expand on their spiritual path and practice, right? I've got the tarot home study course. I made the whole practical tarot tutor channel years ago. Um, I've got an astrology crash course on Patreon. And I've got another channel, Integrative Mysticism, which I've left a link in the down bar below this live. You can check out where I'm also bringing in more instructional videos. And I've been, you know, of course, working on the Integrative Mysticism podcast over there, uh, bringing on all kinds of different content to expand, even talking about the paranormal, talking about ghosts and hauntings and magic and all of that good stuff. But this video I wanted to dedicate to the querents, to the audience, to you, to the people who buy readings, to the people who watch readings, to the people who are, well, getting them. And in this post, I basically just let it all out. And so I'm going to read you the post just to kind of organize my thoughts. And then we are going to go further from there. I mean this with love. Y'all have got to stop with the I'm seeking clarity stuff when you're supposed to be asking real questions in psychic readings. You can have so much more rich and detailed readings when you ask clear questions. When you need clarity, we, the readers, need clarity on what you need clarity about, or we are in the fog with you. Tell us where to look, and we will. Mind reading is a very specific kind of skill that not everybody has. And mind reading and seeing the future or clairvoyance don't always come in the same package. In fact, they very seldom do. You know, some people tend to be more in the mind reading category, and some people tend to be more in the future seeing category. Some people are more in the medium category. Some people are more here or there. And so there is some crossover. And we are talking about real psychic readings here. We are not talking about intuitives, you know, because that's a whole other thing. And on the channel, uh, on the other channel, on integrative mysticism, I've got a whole video all about knowing the difference between being a psychic and being an intuitive. If you want to check that out, again, link below. But we need to know what you want to look at. There is a process. It's very different. Psychic guidance is like a genie in a bottle. You get your wish granted the way, or as in, in accordance with the way that you articulated your wish. Now, if you've ever gotten a reading with me before, I've probably said that to you. If I needed more of a clear, understood direction of what I'm looking at. How you make the wish matters, right? We've all heard about the genie granting the wish and the wish coming out wrong because so-and-so didn't say enough, or someone was careless or haphazard or nonchalant about the way they were making the wish, and so the information that went into making the wish made a mess. When it comes to psychic readings, it's very much the same thing. How you ask your question and how clear and coherent it is dictates the quality of how the answers come forward where the guidance is coming from and what is happening there. And that is important because if you are not sure what you're looking at, you can't tell somebody what to look at. And that's how a lot of my gifts work. I can get extremely detailed and extremely granular information, you know, and I've had people write to me saying, Hey, okay, that's a lot, you know, uh, you scared the hell out of me. Uh, you you brought up something that wasn't even in the reading that, you know, that wasn't even a part of the question. And this was like seven years ago, whatever. You know, that's kind of how I do. You know, I'm old school psychic in that way, as in born psychic. I didn't just like, I don't know, have a breakup and decide I was going to be psychic one day. However, what ends up happening if I don't have any real question or anything that is crystal clear or coherent, all I get is psychic salad, which is kind of like the spiritual equivalent of a word salad. And there really isn't a whole lot that I can put together for you. So when you go to a real psychic, make sure that you understand that you can get more out of asking specific questions. It can also be a good tool for discernment. If you find that somebody who says they are psychic, or they say they're a reader, or they say they're intuitive, 
cannot work with specific questions and cannot give specific answers to specific questions. They're either not fully developed in their work or they're not who they say they are. So the more specific the question, the better the quality of the reading, but also the better work you're going to get and the better connection you're going to have with a psychic of quality. And you're going to have better discernment opportunities as to who's who and what's what. Be mindful of that, please. Okay. Because when you are going into spaces where you are just kind of open to anything, you're going to be taken advantage of. You know, there are plenty of people out there, unfortunately, who have gotten very popular because they spew a lot of emotionally pleasing babble for money and vulnerable people who really don't care about actually changing their circumstances. They just want a distraction from the circumstances, get confused, and they just end up supporting it and helping it grow and grow. And honestly, I used to care a lot more about that because I kind of felt like these people were raping and pillaging my culture and community, and they did. But now I'm kind of in a place where I'm aware that that's going away, that's not in anymore, the whole let's turn it into a personal development cult is gone, and I'm just happy for that. But I do care about the integrity of the work, and I do care about the people coming in and getting readings from me or from people that I know and that I respect, and them not necessarily know, knowing how to be present for it and not knowing what they can get out of it. Now, what motivated me to do this video is because I ended up actually just sending an email back to a guy after sending him a video report. And again, if you're watching this, I am not attacking you. I am not insulting you, sir. I, I, that's why I said, I want to do this again with you. And the reason was, is that um, the way that I got the instructions on doing the reading were not very clear to me. He was asking for clarity, and then I ended up needing clarity on what he needed. But because we weren't in a conversation together live, it was very difficult. So I did the reading. I did get information. He confirmed I was correct about a few things. But I would like the opportunity to do that again, because I know I can do better when I have the question in a much more specific and clear way. And I would hope that you would all have psychics or people that you follow and respect who have that same level of integrity and honor for the craft. It's really important to see what you're leaving out and why. I think that there is sometimes um, a fear that if I give you a bit of information, then you're just going to rephrase it. There's a way to fix it, okay? Because I've heard of that before, you know, and I've seen that before. You don't have to give your life story in a, when you're giving asking a question. Actually, I, I don't like it when people um, overshare, which is why if you ever go on my website or if you did fill out a form to get a reading or something like that, I'll even read you how the form works. And this is really all I need. First off, my, I always ask, what is your question? And then I make a note and I say, I specialize in answering specific questions. Therefore, more specific or coherent the question, the better quality the reading. Much better quality than, say, something generic or an empty, open-ended intention, right? So don't just come to me and say, I want clarity. Do not do that. You know, love yourself. <laughs> don't say, I need clarity, because I'll need clarity on what you need clarity on. You're the one in your life. Tell me what you want. It's kind of like... Um, hiring painters to paint the inside of your house, but then you're also um, asking them to pick out the color for you. They don't know what color you want. You know, so you, you want to give your, set yourself up for success there. And then if I do need clarity, you know, I can say, what is your current status or connection in the situation? Right? Are you looking for a new job? Okay. Are you currently working? Are you not working? Uh, do you work for yourself? Very easy answer, you know, as an example there. What do you hope to learn about the situation in the reading? And what is your goal or intention for the situation? A simple four sentence structure is all you need. 
four sentences. Don't write a ream. And for those of you who saw my other video on integrative mysticism, where I was talking about how to give better psychic readings, right? Don't allow your client to load the reading. Don't let them write a ream. Discourage them from writing their life story. Don't do trauma dumping. Don't encourage trauma dumping. And if it's happening, don't get distracted by trauma dumping. Find the question. Find the focus on solutions and progress. Don't, you know, you know, because we're not therapists, we're not psychologists. And, you know, I mean, I'm not trained to deal with that stuff. I'm here to be a psychic. So um have some integrity if you're a reader, right? Don't don't offer to be there. Don't don't charge people to trauma dump on you. That's that's just vile. The four sentence structure is really all anyone needs to use to get quality readings. That's all. Okay. Um, stop asking for clarity. Stop asking for general guidance and clarity in your readings now. <laughs> That's all I can say, because you can do better. You can you can get better from your readings. You can get better from your psychics. Um, and it's kind of tough. You know, a lot of psychics don't really speak up about this, uh, you know, but I don't care. I've talked to plenty of psychics that I know, that I like, that I respect. Some of you guys know them. Some of them are people here in town in, you know, the Seattle area. And there is kind of a fear of, well, should I speak up? Should I correct? I don't want to alienate my clients. I don't want to make people feel bad. I don't want to embarrass people. But the truth of the matter is, is this is actually intended to help, right? This is going to help people who might be either misunderstanding how this can serve them, or maybe people who should not be going to see psychic readers right now, you know, because that's another thing I did want to also mention. Another thing that can really hurt uh, a, a reading is emotional instability and energetic instability. A reader is going to be opening up. And if there is something that is prohibiting the reading from being contained to the question, whether it's excess interruptions, maybe you're not in a healthy state of mind or emotions to be there, don't get a reading. And um, I did have a session with somebody um, earlier this month, and uh, I'm not going to go obviously into the details of the session uh, because that would be very unethical, but there was a bit of a challenge that this person was having and I don't think it was the right time for them to be getting a reading. And the big issue that came forward there was just, um, there was no respect for the quietude and the space and the time that it needed to actually get the information. And while I do believe, yes, it is, of course, incumbent upon us, the readers, to be able to say, look, I need you to make sure I don't break, I, I need you to make sure that you don't break my train of thought I need you to make sure that you can control yourself. I need you to make sure that you can let the information come forward. I need you to understand that you shouldn't be asking questions or getting readings if you don't think you can handle the answers. Yes, that's true. That is all on the psychic to be giving, because let's not forget, there is a huge, we're, we're kind of doing a big cleanup right now of the whole, you know, alternative medicine for uh, mental illness that really should never have happened in this community this last 10 years. And I'm not saying that in, in judgment or to stigmatize, you know, I mean, I've, I've been very open about my own neurodivergence, right? I'm very clear about having my, you know, OCD. Um, I've, you know, I've got all kinds of little, you know, quirks and ticks like that too. But Know yourself and know where you are. If you cannot handle a reading right now, don't get a reading. If the topics you are trying to read on are so distressing that you can't control yourself in the situation, don't get a reading. Because you might end up with a reader like me who is very much cut off from you. When I give readings to people, I cut myself off emotionally from them. 
I do not go in. I'm not here to do like empathic dialysis or emotional dialysis. I'm here to do a psychic reading, which means I need to be clear. I need to be clean. And that might be more distressing for you to not have me mirror you, to not have me therapize the situation because I'm here to give a psychic reading. I'm not here to be a therapist or to trauma dump on or to be a shoulder to cry on. I am here to be a reader. I'm not a healer. You know, I am here to give messages that come forward and, you know, answer the questions that are being asked to the best of my ability and in accordance with the quality of the question. However, it can be difficult in situations where we can't answer the questions. And so when we can't answer the question because it's too sensitive or the energy of the situation is out of control or there's too much emotional instability or there's too much distress, too many interruptions, too many breaking of the trains of thought, it's not a time for you to be getting a reading. Okay. And again, I'm not saying that in order to insult anybody. And I hope that nobody would take that as an insult. I personally, you know, do not run to my cards when I'm in distress. You know, if I'm having a stressful situation or if I'm really scared of something or I'm just kind of, you know, at a nine out of 10 out of a really bad day, I don't go and do a reading for myself. And I don't really call my friends for like an emergency situation to tell me what's going on. Because I know that I'm in a situation where I'm not going to be able to handle even the positive information, the way it needs to be handled. I let myself come down. I let myself calm down. And then I let myself be put in a position where I can do the work. I don't treat this as a distraction. And I certainly, you know, if I were not a psychic, I would not be putting myself in a position to be taken advantage of. Because there are people out there, like I said, who are basically patients pretending to be therapists who want to encourage you to trauma dump, that want to encourage you to just get addicted to the venting, to get addicted to the anger or addicted to the sadness or the hollowness or whatever you might be going through so that you pay them to hear you and pull a couple cards to tell you, take it one day at a time. You're never going to get that from me. I promise you. I promise you. But if you want quality readings and you want to do better, these are the bad habits you got to break, okay? Um, otherwise, it is going to always be falling short. And even if a person is a natural psychic like me, or they're a really talented, trained psychic, or they are, you know, they've been at this for, for years and years, they're still going to be able to give you something, but they could give you more. And so learning to ask questions the right way, knowing when you should or should not be getting a reading, and learning how to treat this as the psychic art it is versus the emotional exercise it's not is going to really help you, okay? Just something I really, really wanted to put out there for everybody. Um, so that's, that's all I got. Um, I think I will spare you <laughs> another 25 minutes because I could go on, but just a little bit of a chat I wanted to get out there for people. I originally was going to put this on the Integrative Mysticism channel because that is more of the, um, you know, I guess you could say back of the house stuff. It's the non-horoscope, non-tarot stuff, uh, but this is the tarot and horoscope channel, and this is about how to, you know, maybe do tarot and readings and psychic work more, you know, get proper readings, handle it more properly, and also at the same time, get better quality out of it by knowing what you can bring to the table, okay? So just something I wanted to, to put out there for everyone. Uh, while I'm here, I might as well do a little Q&A. Um, I see people. I see people in the chat. How are you doing? Hello, Cynthia. Hey. Much needed for you and your clients. Oh, I know, I know, I know. Thank you. Thank you, Cynthia. Cynthia's my girl. She's my sister. She's my little sister. All right. Hi, Jennifer. Nice to see you. Have you been gone somewhere? I've just been noticing your name popping up a lot more and more. Like, I remember you were around a little bit, like maybe a year, two years ago, and then you just kind of came back. <laughs> and I was just like, where'd you go?
Um, Curb, I'm not doing psychic readings. Again, I'm not, I'm not reading um, just live readings. I was kind of giving more of an instruction. Um, you know, I'm not sure. You know, maybe if you want to get a session, you know, we can talk about that then. Hello, Shilpa. Of course. Nope. Always. Thank you for watching. Hello, Tammy. Hey, Bubble Tea Tarot. Hi. Hello, Carmen. Welcome, if you're new. Hello, Carmen. Mariposa, happy holidays. Yep, happy Yulma Chris Mahana Kwanzaa to everybody. Jennifer again, yeah. Oh, busy schedule, two jobs. Okay, that makes sense. Merry Christmas, everybody. I appreciate the advice you gave. Yep, thank you, Anne-Marie. Thank you. All right, well, it looks like we're not really doing much of a Q&A. Um, I do need to get going, um, just because, again, it is, we're getting time, getting down to, you know, again, the crunch for the holidays and everything. And I have two families that I visit for the holidays, and it's a fair amount of driving. So I'm just trying to get everything all straightened up and good to go around here. Weekly tarot forecasts are coming out tomorrow. And if you haven't seen them yet, the new bi-weekly astrology forecasts are already up. I put those out yesterday, so you can check those out as well. And guys, if you do ever want to, you know, take uh, a trip over to integrative mysticism, where again, gets a lot more personal, if you want to maybe get to know me and my process a bit better, as well as, you know, study a bit more than just tarot and horoscopes, that is going to place the, the place to go, though we do talk a bit about astrology, and we definitely talk a bit about tarot on that channel as well, okay? So you all take care. Thank you so much for dropping by. I hope that this, you know, does help you out, you know, just again, just see what you can do to take care of yourselves while you're out there, you know, because you should be arming yourself with good questions. All right. That would be just the thing to look at there. Oh, last. Oh, here's, here's a question sneaking at the last minute. Uh, Tammy is our rising sign more accurate than our sun sign. Oh, okay. I want to, let me clear this up and then we'll, and then, and then I, then I do got to go. Um, so the reason astrologers, I'm going to talk about the astrology one first. Okay. So the reason astrologers ask you to check your rising sign is because your rising sign is the sign that starts the entire measurement of all the housing, the house cusps in your chart. Now, when thousands of people are watching your videos, there is just no way to know when everyone's born, right? I mean, nobody would be delusional enough to think that uh, a, a general reading is a personal reading. So what we do is we ask you to look at your rising sign because you are going to have, yes, a much more accurate, especially when it comes to timing is concerned, read. Solar readings still are accurate. They can still actually help out, but timing falls on the rising sign for sure. Uh, whereas the solar chart is a bit more general, um, a bit more subjective, a bit more fluid. When it comes to tarot, the reason I say check your rising and your moon is because that's how I charge my deck. That's how I bless and program my deck to work. Uh, because, you know, when you are working with tarot, you should be charging and programming your deck before you do readings, right? If you've ever got a reading with me, I tend to go silent, right? I cut myself off from you and everyone else. And then I put the intention in the cards clear, cleanse, program them, and then be good to go. Well, I do the same thing when I am doing horoscopes, uh, sorry, tarot scopes and tarot forecasts, not horoscopes, horoscopes is astrology, tarot forecasts. And again, there actually is a video about how I do my weekly reset on my cards on the other channel. If you want to go check that out, if you want to see more of that process, right? A little bit more behind the scenes. Okay. Um, last one, which is your psychic reading on your website? Well, I, all, all of them are. I am a psychic. Uh, so tarot is a psychic reading if they're doing it right. Um, it's, you know, otherwise they're just playing a parlor game. Um, that, so I am a psychic. So if you go to my website, integrativemysticism.com, I've got everything there. Um, so I hope that makes sense. Okay. And hello, Christina. Merry Christmas. Hope you're all doing well. Yep. Everyone be safe. Hey, I'm Wakefield. Happy holidays. Merry Christmas. Happy Yulma, Quis Qu Yulma Chris Mahana Kwanzaa. That's a thing I made up a long time ago, just to kind of cover the whole spectrum there. And so 
I think I am going to bounce and yeah, hopefully this helps you guys out. And yeah, if you, again, for those of you who are new to me, I am a psychic. I am a spiritual practitioner. Uh, again, you might want to look at the other channel to kind of get to know a bit more about my technique, my style and my history. I uh, no, I'm not, uh, you know, part of the new age awakening certification craze. I natural homegrown organic. This has been my life. So um, I'm not new age. I am old age. So if you know what that means, you know what that means. If you don't know what that means, go check out the other channel and <laughs> follow the link in the down bar below. So you guys take care and I will see you all again soon. And again, uh, weekly tarot should be out tomorrow and bi-weekly astrology for the first half of January is already up and I will see you all again soon. All right. Merry Christmas. Happy Yulma Christmas Hanukkah. Take care.